Now, this is the step number three. Uh, we have now to analyze the BDS, and we have to analyze the BDS for three conditions here. We have to analyze the BDS for three conditions. Why for three conditions? So let me explain. Now, the A is we have two redundant actions, AR1 and AR2. So if you remember in the equation, in the first equation, we have the capital M, and there then is a small m also. And small m corresponds to the unit load. Now, as we have two redundant locations, so where you need to put that unit load. So it means that in the first step, you need to analyze this BDS due to the external load. In the second step, part B, you have to analyze this BDS by applying a unit load at the redundant location one. And then in the third step, you have to apply the unit load corresponding to the redundant location in two. So if you have three, uh, this uh, number of this redundant locations, so then you, if, you, if the redundant, if the static indeterminacy is equal to three, it means then there will be four conditions of analysis in this step number three, right? And so on. So let, let, let's study the step, the step A here, uh, which means that we have to develop or we have to write the equation for bending moment when this BDS will be subjected to external load. And also we have to analyze the whole. So uh, this is the BDS. Now it is subjected to the 2 k per foot load uh, URL on number number two and a point load at this point B, five shift magnitude. Now, what we do, we now carry out the analysis of this structure. We need to analyze this structure now. But we know this is now a determinate structure. We don't have any support here. So it, it, is, it is a determinate structure. We can solve it. How we, need to, how we can solve it now, let's have a look at this. We separate these members. This is the member number two. Uh, and this is the member number two, and this is the member number uh, one here. This is member number one. So I started the member number two, and I analyzed this member number two first. So this member has a length of 30 feet. Now, how we can solve it? We can solve it using the available equilibrium equations. You can solve it using the available equilibrium equations, which are summation of fx, summation of fy, and summation of m. Now, we know that this c is a free end, whereas this b is a fixed end. Why? Because we have, separate, we have separated this, this member number two from member number one, and member number two and one were connected at this joint, p. So there was a rigid joint here. So that's why we will treat it as a fixed joint, as, as a fixed end. So this is a free end, this is a fixed end. Now, if we apply the mission of Fx here, so we see that there is no external load acting along the x-axis on this member. On this member CB, there is no external load which is acting along the x-axis we have one external load that is 2k per foot but it is not acting in the x it is acting in the y-axis actually so in the x-axis we don't have any external load it means that the internal reactions here uh, at these joints c and b they will uh, horizontal they will be zero they will be zero okay the horizontal reactions in fact And if we apply the submission of Fy, we have a uniform distributed load of 2k per foot, which is acting along the Y. And this is the only external load acting here. So what happens now if we take submission of Fy? So what we come up with, this 2k per foot load cannot 
he supported or resisted at this at this point c because c is a free end so by summation of fy equals to 0 uh what you do actually you multiply this 2 kip per foot load with this length which is 30 feet so you come up with a 60 kips load is this reaction here this okay so we have solved for the uh axial here we have solved for the uh this vertical here so so what we need now to solve we need now to solve for the moment also and that is by summation of moment so uh how many loads are causing moments here so if you look at uh the moment is caused by the uniformly distributed load of 2 kip per foot magnitude this one and uh no other load is causing moment at this point right so because this load is zero this 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 force is zero so we have only this 2 kip per foot load which is causing moment at this point b and how we can find the value of moment at b is that it is equal to this 2 kip per foot into 30 this gives you the resultant of this udl and then you multiply it with half of this because the moment arm then becomes half because the resultant acts at the middle or at the center of this member so you left with then half of this 30 feet so then you multiply it with the moment arm which is 30 by 2 in this case you come up with 900 kip foot uh this moment here why it is uh anti clockwise why it is anti clockwise because this is the applied load external load which is acting which is which is causing moment clockwise so now to resist this clockwise moment this is this is a resistive moment this is a resistance this is a resistance this is a resistance this is also resistance so this resistance will be in counter clockwise direction it will be 900 kip feet okay so i hope this is clear till now if you have any question you can ask now Let's move forward now so uh by analysis we means to find all the unknown so we have completely analyzed this structure this this member in fact three unknowns they are known now three unknowns they are known now so after that we need to write the equation for bending moment sam and this equation for this equation we take uh x here right and then what we do we now need to write an equation in terms of x so what will be the equation now here so this equation will be denoted by the capital m why capital m because we already have decided that we will uh we will denote the bending moment equation which will be due to the external load applied on the bds uh, by this capital m so that's why i'm noting by the capital m and this cb is showing the member because we have one more member also so you must be able to differentiate between the members so this moment is for member cb and how we can find the moment at this the moment equation at this section so if we take the moment here so we have 2 kip per foot uh 2 kip per foot uh udl acting in this section this is the section in fact the value is 2 kip per foot and 2 kip per foot multiplied with the x this will give you the resultant of this udl right 2 kip per foot into this x this gives you the resultant now we need to find the moment at this section so the moment will be found by multiplying this resultant with the moment arm and the moment arm is half of the x so it is x by 2 right so this now is actually uh acting in this direction this moment so if we talk about the resist resistive one uh that will be in this direction here right so the sign convention is that uh such type of when we have such type of situation so we treat it as negative we treat it as negative that's why we have put a negative sign here 
That's why we have put a negative sign here. There will be a condition when we will be putting a positive sign here. So this moment is actually causing moment in this this way, and the resistance will be offered. The the moment equation for which we are writing uh, this 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 all this uh, this is actually the resistive one. So we can see that this is causing a situation which we treat as negative, right? So this is minus two into this. What we get from here, we get an equation for moment air here air to be minus x square. This two cancels out with this two, and you get minus x square. Uh, yeah, this is the sign convention. We treat this situation as negative, and we treat this situation as positive. So we will have we have a situation. Uh, this situation here. That's why we have taken negative sign with this two. And later on, we will be talking about a situation which will be positive. Uh, I want you guys to write down the values of these reactions now at this point, because this is the step number A. And later on in the equation, I will be writing these. Uh, values and I'll be using these values. So you must remember that from where these values have come. So, so those values will be coming from this step, and you must uh, at least note with yourself that in this step three a, what we have done, we have wrote an equation for bending moment m, and this equation for bending moment m is minus x square, and this is when the load, external load, was applied on this first member. Right. You also need to know that when the member number two was solved, we got these reactions to be zero, and we got these internal these resistances to be uh, equal to 60 kips, equals to zero, and equals to 90 900 kips. But we will be applying them later on, so uh, you must at least remember these. Right. Okay. Now I proceed to the next one. The member number one is solved, so now I proceed to the member number two. And the member number two, I will take all these reactions, all these resistances to the member number one now. So the vertical one, the vertical one, which is 60 kips, which is of 60 kips magnitude, it is pointing upward. So for member number one, it will be reversed here. So the direction will be reversed and it will act downward. And the magnitude will remain the same and that is 60 kips. Also, we have a moment here. That moment is acting uh, anti-clockwise here so for member number one this will become clockwise this will become clockwise right uh, we don't need to take this because this is zero so if you take this it will be zero here now here is the five skip load which we uh, which you were asking about so we are now taking this five skip load uh, to be to act here in this in this on this member number one so we will be taking its effect in member number one here, right? So now if we need to solve this now in the same way as we solve the member number two, so how we can solve it? We, apply, we will again apply the same equilibrium equations, which are summation of fx, summation of fy, and summation of this moment. So summation of fx, uh, we know that there is only one load acting here, which is five kip load, uh, and this five kip load will be resisted at this point A, here. So from summation of fx, we have this point, this this load equals this force equals to five kips. From summation of fy, we know there is only point this load is acting on this and from where this load has come from uh, this load has come from this member now member number two and that was the internal resistance at that at that joint due to the vertical uh, load of two kip per foot magnitude so this 60 kips is acting here and it will be resisted at this support uh, by reversing its direction here so this is 60 kips we now know uh, this horizontal we now know this vertical so what we need to know now is this moment also so what is what is causing moment at this point we know that one is this five kip load it is causing a moment and this is causing a moment in this direction right 
this is causing a moment in this direction so this moment will be resisted in this direction right and this this resistance mag this resistance will be equal to 5 kip into 15 feet uh 5 into 15 will be equals to 75 and what else is causing the moment here so there is an applied moment yes ali you are right uh, it will be 900 plus so this is 900 kif this this feet it it is causing moment as you can see it is causing moment again in the same direction so it will be again resisted resisted in the same way so two moments there two two factors they cause they are causing moments so there will be two resistive factors also to uh, restrain them or to resist them so now let's do this the point load of magnitude 5 kip it is causing a moment also a 900 kip fit uh, this moment which was transferred from the member cb it is also causing this so this moment will be in this direction and it will be equal to 5 into 15 plus 900 and this is equal to 975 give it now can i say that this structure is this this member is completely solved yes why because we know all the three the shear the the axial the the moment at this point also we know the same at this point also so it means that this member is completely solved after solving the member we need now to write the equation for the uh, bending moment in terms of x for that we need to write this x here this is the x this is the section we need to choose the section here so at this section now we need to find out the equation here and that equation uh, what is causing the moment at this section now we, if we start from this end so uh, this 60 kip load this this is not causing any moment here of course it's not causing because because there is no moment term for this 60 kips load uh 5 kip yes 5 kip is causing a moment so let me uh, clear this a bit this 5 kip will cause the moment in this direction right and this will be resisted at this section this way and when we have this type of situation right when we have this type of situation here this one we will treat it as positive this is a sign convention right so this is positive here also if we have this type of situation which is coming in the next one this ma this moment it is causing now a moment in this direction and this moment now will be resisted of course in this way so now we have this type of situation this type so we have negative it means the moment due to y skip this will be taken as positive and the moment due to this 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 uh, 975 kip fit this will be taken as uh, negative so let's do this the moment at this section ab yes this is ab why because this member is ab right so this is the moment for ab and this will be minus 975 kip fit y minus i have explained that and this is plus 5 kip into x uh, because of this sign convention so we come up with the final equation of bending moment to be for member ab is minus 975 plus 5x okay so we are done with this part a here of the step number 3 uh, we have solved the member each member member number 1 member number 2 and then we have also wrote the equations of bending moments for each member so i'll now be a bit faster in the uh, step number b and step number c of the uh, main step number 3 here because we will repeating we will be now repeating the same uh for a unit load now so now what i need to do now in the case b here i will now be applying a unit load corresponding to my first redundant action and my first redundant action was ar1 and if you remember it was in this upward direction 
So this is the AR1 corresponding to AR1. This is the first unit load. Now, due to unit load, you need to solve this member BC. And then you need to solve this member AB. And you need to write the equation for bending moment. And then in the step number three, we will apply the one kip load corresponding to the AR2. And again, we will solve the same structure. So uh, let's solve this quickly. This is the one kip load applied. This is 30 feet uh, length uh, member. One kip load applied here. So if we apply the summation of FX, uh, summation of FX will give us uh, zero uh, these axial uh, resistances because there is no external load applied. So if there is no external load, it means there is no axial resistance, right? Okay. Uh, now, uh, summation of FY, what we get, we have a one kip applied load here. So there should be a resistance that this one kip load will be resisted at this joint, right? At this point B. And of course, this will be the negative direction because uh, the sign convention we are using here is that the upward is taken as positive, downward is taken as negative. Uh, if you point this towards downward, so you don't need to write this negative sign with this then, right? Why I've written this minus one? Because I have, uh, I have solved it here. I have solved it through this equation. So there was minus one coming in this equation, which means you reverse the direction. So if you reverse the direction, it means you don't need then write to, to take minus one with that, right? Okay. So this load is resisted here to this shear. And now, we take the moment, uh, what will be the moment here? The moment uh, at free end will be zero. And there is no moment caused at this. The moment caused by this external one is one kip and it will be one into 30. So the moment here is 30. So why? Because it is, it is in this direction. So the resistance will be coming in this direction and the resistance magnitude is equal to 30 kip fit, right? Okay now, so uh we move forward now we have solved the the member for unit load we have all these three knowns we have all these three known now we need to take the bending moment equation so the bending moment equation uh will be equal to what now let's do that same x same origin c here uh, what will be the bending, uh, this bending moment equation here? So the bending moment equation, the sign convention is the same. But if you remember, we chose negative previously, the previous step. What do you think? What should, what should now we use here? This is one kip, so it is causing uh, this way. And of course, the resistance at this section will be coming this way. So this, this, this corresponds to this sign convention. So this is positive. So now the bending moment equation will be denoted by this small m. You have to remember this, this small and capital M, right? Why small m? Because we are now taking this because of the unit load applied. And why I'm writing this one here? I'm writing this one because this bending moment equation corresponds to the unit load, which is acting at the redundant location number one. Now, in the later steps, we will be applying the same unit load corresponding to the redundant location number two. So we then will write two here. We'll not write one here then. Okay. So this is M1 uh, and CB, of course, correspond to the member. Uh, and this moment is equal to positive one times X. So positive one is coming here, positive one times X. So this is one X. So this is X here, actually. So the member uh, CB, the moment for this member, this is equal to X. So you have to remember the values of these uh, reactions, resistances, in fact, and you also have to remember the value of this bending moment equation. We will be using them later in that equation. Okay, so I hope everything is uh, going clear for you guys. Now, what we do, we need to now solve the next uh, member. So now we'll, we'll transfer all these uh, resistances. We will, so we'll, 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 we'll solve, we will now apply them on this. And then we will solve this member number one. So this uh, one kip, which is acting downward, uh, the, when it is transferred to the member AB, it will be reversed. So it will be acting upward, in fact, now. 
magnitude of force remains the same. And now if we talk about this uh, bending moment, so bending moment is acting clockwise on member CB. So for member AB, it will be reversed and it will be acting anti-clockwise. So no need to transfer this zero. We don't, because it, it is the same thing, zero, if you transfer it even. So, okay. This is, now we need to solve this member. These are the uh, internal reactions which we have transferred from that previous member. And now what we need to do, we need to apply summation of fx equals to zero. So there is no uh, axial load transfer from that. There is zero load transfer from that member uh, CB. So it means summation of fx, there is zero load here. So there is zero resistance here. Summation of Fy, we do have one kip load acting here upward. It will be resisted here through a downward acting one kip load by applying summation of Fy. And if we apply summation of M, this is summation of moment. So there is only one moment now. There is only one factor which is causing this moment, and that is the 30 kip fit uh, moment, which is acting this, uh, this way, and it will be resisted this way, right? And what will be the magnitude of this resistive moment? It will be the same as the applied moment. So this is 30 kip fit, so it will also be equal to 30 kip fit. Okay, there is no other factor which is causing moment here because we don't have any other one, right? Now, we write the equation here. So this is again the bending moment equation for member BA or member AB, whatever you write. But important is this one. Why it is one? Because it is this bending moment equation is coming from the point, sorry, the unit load which was applied corresponding to the redundant location number one. Right? So this is the same convention we used earlier. We will be using it again here. So if you look at this only 30 kip fit moment, it is causing this way. Resisting resistance will come from this way. So it is corresponding to this sign convention, which is positive. So we will take this as 30. There is no other load causing moment at this section, right? So we have solved this member number two also. So this is for the step number three. Now we quickly do the step number three, in which now the unit load will be applied corresponding to the redundant location number two, which was horizontal. And now for the same, we need to solve this, uh, these members. So the member number one will be solved. How it will be solved? Summation of fx, summation of fy, summation of this moment. So we, need, we, we get all these values. We get all these values. How we get? Now you must know if we apply summation of fx. So actually we have only one kip load acting. This axial load will be resisted here through this oppositely acting one kip resistance. And if we apply summation of Fy, we don't have any vertical load. We don't have any vertical resistance then. Then if we apply summation of moment, so only one moment, so sorry, there is no fourth pausing moment. This is zero, this is one kip, but there is no moment arm for this. There is no moment at the free end. So it means this moment at this point, this will also be zero, right? This will also be zero. So uh, same way we write the Bending moment equation now, the bending moment equation M2 I'm writing. Why M2? Because two corresponds to the redundant location. So now the unit load is acting corresponding to the redundant location number two. That's why it is M2. And it is equal to zero times the X. This is zero, this is X, so there is no moment here. So it means the bending moment equation is zero here. Okay, now quickly move to the next uh, member. This one kip is also causing the moment at A. Uh, how it is causing, this is 1 into 15, and the resistance will be coming also this in terms of this 1 into 15, 15 kip fit. Uh, okay, so now we need to write the bending moment equation for the next member. So M2 now, Y2, because redundant location 2, 
this two is corresponding to and uh, what will be the equation looking like it will be minus 15 why minus 15 because uh this 15 k foot this is causing this word so resistance will be this word and this is corresponding to this convention which is negative right and we have positive one times x because this is acting in this way resistance will be coming this way and we will have the final equation in the form of minus 15 plus x okay so this is the end of the step number three right this is the end of the step number three so now we move to the step number four we discussed it that uh, after writing all these bending moment equations capital m small m for each member each time step a step b step c now we shall arrange them in the form of a table so if we arrange them in the form of a table the advantage will be that if we later apply the equations on these bending moments or these bending moment equations so there will be less chances of error because they will be right in front of us so we will be easily able to pick the values of each bending moment equation whether if it is m small m or small m2 okay so now this is the uh, this was the uh, this basically determinate structure basic determinant structure bds now the table should look like this the segments how many segments or you can also write members here how many members we have we have member ab we have member bc here so all the data or all the equations corresponding to a b we will write in this column and all the uh, data and the equations for the member this b c this will be written in this in this column so origin now i already told you that you have to then write the origin here so for if you remember for the member this a b when we were solving them for the equations bending moment equations we were taking the x from this point. So this is our origin. We have written here A. Similarly, for the member BC, we have chosen this C as to be our origin from this C, right? This was to be our origin. So, and what are the limits? The limits means that uh, from where, because we know that later on in the equation, there is an integration involved. So the integration should start from some, should have some limits. So the, we will be applying the integration on each member. So for member AB, the integration will start from zero, which is the origin, and it will be the member will be integrated till this end, which is 15 feet. So the limit here is zero to 15 feet. And for the next member, the limits are from zero to 30 feet. So this is the zero, and from if we, if we move on to 30, so this is the 30 feet here. The total uh, length is 30 feet. Okay, so, and what are the bending moment, uh, sorry, sorry, this is the moment of inertia, the third one, moment of inertia. So the moment of inertia, it will be given in the question to you guys. And the moment of inertia here, we have a moment of inertia for the member uh, AB, this is I. And for the member BC, it is 2I. It is 2I, right? It will be given in the question always. So in this current question, the moment of inertia for the first member is given as I, whereas the bending, sorry, this moment of inertia for the next member, it is two times the I, right? So now uh, we come to this M values, capital M values. So I told you that you should remember the values of M as we will be using. So now we are using them here in the table this minus 975 plus 5x this is the capital m value for member ab and minus x squared this is the bending moment uh, m value capital m value for member bc right so from where this m value is coming this is coming from the step number 3a what we did there we actually applied an external load on this structure and then we solve this member we solve this member then for each member we wrote the equation 
so actually this is this equation is the equation which we, we wrote for this section if you remember and this equation is this equation when we when we wrote for this section uh, when external load was applied on this structure okay from where are these m1 values coming these m1 values coming are coming from the same analysis step which was the step 3b and we again did the same for the unit load and this time the unit load was applied corresponding to the redundant location number one which was this vertical right so this 30 is uh, from from here remember a b and this x was for here if you remember okay so uh, and from where are these m2 values coming these m2 values are coming from uh, the step number 3c when we solved our bds for unit load when it was applied uh, corresponding to redundant location uh, location number 2 or redundant action number 2 right so we applied that to unit load we solved this member we solved this member then we wrote the equation for this member we wrote the equation for this member so this minus 15 plus x was the equation for this member and this zero was the equation for, for this number you remember there was a zero also with us in one of the equations and so okay so if you are getting it correctly so now we move forward so this is this is the table now we will be using frequently in the coming uh, slides okay now in the step number five after arranging the data now we move to step number five and in the step number five what we do that in the step number five we now need to develop our drl matrix what is the drl matrix now the drl matrix it is consisting of the values values of what values of the displacements and displacements at which point displacements at those points which we call our redundant locations so if you find out the displacement corresponding to the redundant location number one you call it drl1 if you find out the displacement corresponding to the redundant location number two you call it drl2 but both displacements shall come from the bds when it is subjected to the externally applied load when it is subjected to so 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 the major things we already did in the step number three step number three a b c uh we did all the uh, things which now we will be requiring in this equation we did all them uh, there in that step what we did there we, we we found the values of m small capital m we found the values of small m what we need now in this step is just to plug in those values in this equation right so if you look at this equation this is the drl1 which means this is the displacements corresponding to the redundant location number one and when the bds is subjected to the external load so if you remember uh, when we apply the external load on the BDS, uh, it was the step number 3A. And we found out the capital M value for that, member number one, which was coming to be this minus 975 plus 5x. So this submission means that each time you need to apply this integration to each member. So how many members we have now in this fr given frame structure? We have two frame members member number one member number two we already uh, saw them now you need to apply this integration to the member number one first so here we are applying this integration to member number one for member number one the capital m value is coming from here the small m1 value for the same member it is here this is the member number one a b capital m value small m1 value we did it here why m1 because we are we are we are finding the drl1 we are finding the drl1 in drl2 then we will apply the m2 here right so and the limits you know from 0 to 15 because 15 was the length so this is the limit 
So you solve this integration for member number one, and then you aid with this the integration for member number two. And member number two here, it is this one. The capital M value is minus x square. You can see it here. And the small x is this is coming from the small m one value, this one. So when you solve them, uh, okay, well, there there is the two here. From where is this two coming? Uh, because this is the for the member number two, the moment of inertia is two times i. So we have taken this e i s common. This e i s common. So if we take e i s common from this one, so there is nothing left behind. But if you take e i common from this this term, so as it is two e i, so two will left behind, right? Okay, so. Uh, it is clear to you guys. It's good. Now you uh, now now we move forward. So so if you solve this, the DRL one value will come up to be this one in terms of PA. Okay. Uh, what uh, now? We move forward to the DRL two now, and DRL two will be the same. It, it will be just the repetition of the previous step, but now we are Doing doing it now for the unit load number two. We are doing it for unit level unit load number two. We will of course be taking both members, member A B and member B C. But now this two will mean that we are taking the uh, unit load which will correspond to the redundant location number two. So if you do that, how will the equation be? It will be M the same external. It will remain exactly the same. Only change will be in the M1, so now it will become M2. So this is coming from this a capital M value for the first member, and now minus 15 plus x we are taking instead of 30. Minus 15 plus x we are taking because why? Because minus 15 plus x is coming from the M2 value, which is for AB. When we analyze the member AB for unit load corresponding to the location number two. Okay, the limit zero to fifteen remain the same. Now here we have one change only, and that is in the M two. We replace M one by M two, and which is zero in this case. So this term will vanish, and we need to only solve this one, which give us a value of this one. T R L two, right? So now we we saw we we are we are done with our step number five. We found out the values of T R L one and T R L two. And uh, these are the values. Okay. So what we do now, we proceed to step number six, which will be the development of the flexibility matrix. It will be, uh, it will be exactly the same procedure as we did for the DRL one, but now there will be no capital M involved in this equation, right? In this equation. There will be no capital capital M involved. There will be both small m. Now, this coefficient flexibility flexibility coefficient f one one. What does it mean? It means the displacement corresponding to redundant location number one. This first one. This first one. It means. The displacement corresponding to the redundant location number one, due to the unit load which was applied at one. So it means that when you applied the unit load at one, due to that unit load, now you are finding the displacement at the same redundant location, which is one. So it means both are one. So here. We used previously J and K for this M J and M K. Now J is equal to K in this case, so both this will remain will be same. So we will pick only M one value in this case from this table, which is thirty for member number one, and which is X for member number two. Again, two is coming from the two I. So when you solve it for zero to fifteen, from zero to thirty, you get this term for your F one one, right? This is the F one one coefficient. Now, if we solve it for F one two, 
it will be exactly equal to f21 and what does it mean it mean that when you apply the redundant look uh, the unit load as redundant location number 2 and you find out now the displacement at 1 this is 1 2 Two one means when you apply the unit load at location one, and you find the displacement at location two. So why the values will be same? Because if you see, we will have m one and m two in this equation. So if you write m one first and m two second, or if you write m two first and m one second, the net effect is the same. If you write 30 into 5 minus 15 plus x, or if you write minus 15 plus x into 30, both will be the same. Yes, m1, m2 are in a force in multiplication, so they are. They will give you the same effect. For the next member, okay, this m1 is 30. It is coming again from this table. Minus 15 plus x. It is the m2 value for this member AB, which is coming from this portion. And for the next member, the x is coming from here, and of course, this zero is coming from this point. Okay. So now, what we do when we solve this, we get this a value of f one two and f two one. Right. See the value. Now we proceed to the next one, which is the only one a coefficient left. That is f two two, which means the displacement at two when the unit load is applied at two. So it means it will now consist of both m two, and you will pick m two values only. So in the first member, it is minus fifteen plus x taken two times. In second member, it is zero taken two times. Right, two of course coming from the moment of inertia. So when you solve it, you get this as you were f two two. So we now developed our flexibility matrix, and the values are written over here. Right, these are the values. Okay, and uh, what we do now is we directly. Move to the step number uh, seven, and the step number seven will be uh, about what? It will be now to find out the values of the unknown redundant actions (AR). We chosen redundant constraints, we release them, and corresponding to them, we wrote AR one, which was vertical, and AR two, which is which was horizontal. If you remember. So now, from compatibility condition and this principle of superposition, we just we we discussed in the uh, beams section of the structure analysis course. And now it's coming exactly from the same way, and if you multiply this flexibility matrix with this DRS one minus DRL one, now what are the matrices here? This is the flexibility matrix we just developed. This is the DRS one, which are the support settlements. There were no support settlements, so this was zero. This was zero, and this is DRL one and DRL two. So this DRL one matrix, uh, sorry, this DRL matrix is coming from uh, the step, uh, I think number five, where we uh, discussed that this is the displacement corresponding to redundant location number one and two when external load was applied on the uh, on the structure, which was BTS. So now what we do? We plug in those values. Now there there was one e one over e i with this flexibility matrix. So when you take the inverse of it, it becomes e i, right? And this is not the inverse yet not being taken. So after this is this you you take the inverse of this matrix. Now this is zero minus. If you remember, you your d r l one value was negative. So there you must write the negative if there is negative with this. So this minus and minus will become positive, and this EI will cancel out with this EI. And if you solve this, if you multiply these matrices, you get your AR one value to be twenty five point seven one, right? And your AR two value to be minus seventeen point eight five. 
Now, what does it mean? It means that the first action was AR1 unknown, and the second action was AR2. Now, this minus sign means that the direction we chose for the AR2 will now be reversed. So we actually chose this word direction for our AR1, sorry, AR2. Uh, now we know that this should be in, pointing in this direction, right? Now it should be pointing in this direction. Okay. So this is uh, the first portion of the flexibility method. Now in the next portion, we will be solving each member. So if you have any question till now, you can ask now. Okay, everything is clear. So we move to the next step, okay? You have to remember these values for the AR1 and AR2. Now what we need to do, we need to solve out our members, member number one and member number two, by using this equation. Now in this equation, one thing you know is this AR. We just calculated AR. Now you don't know AML, you don't know AMR. What is AM? AM is the member in action. AM stands for the member end actions. What are the member end actions? We discussed it in the beams. These are the end actions. If this is a member, these are the actions. This is axial, this is shear for this member, and this is the moment. So three at one end, three at the other end, this makes the member in actions. So what we need to do by analysis, already we discussed in the very uh, beginning slides, that the aim of this analysis or any analysis uh, of structure, this is, is for, for frames, is to find out the values of these member and actions. If you can find out the values of these member and actions, which are this uh, AM1, AM2, AM3, AM4, AM5, and AM6, so it means that your uh, given frame member, your actual frame member, it is solved. So uh, these are the values which we now are going to solve here. Uh, what are the AML values, AMR values? We'll be now discussing each in detail. What we, what the design convention we are using now? The right we already discussed this, but let's let's repeat it. Rightward horizontal force will be taken positive, else negative. Upward vertical force will be taken as positive. Anything else will be negative. Clockwise moment will be taken as positive. Any other moment will be taken as negative. So anti-clockwise will be taken as negative in this case, as is, it is a two D case. Okay, so now we proceed. We need to find out the values of the AML matrix and the AMR matrix. So first we go and find out the values of the AML matrix. Uh, these are the values of the AML which we, uh, we need to find, AML. Now you see that AML1 is corresponding to AM1, which was here. Now the sequence is important because you know that the vertical is one, the horizontal is two, and the moment is three. So your AML1 should correspond to the AM1, right? Your AML1 should correspond to AM1. So if you choose any arbitrary sequence and you, you keep on changing that again and again, the, at the end of the day, what you will do, you will get an error. Why? Because you, you will not remember that what was my sequence. And you need then to go back and look at the, the chosen one, that what was my AM1, what was my AM2, what was my AM3. So I have, you have to fix one sequence, and then you have to use that again and again in order to work, to be efficient. So your AML1 corresponds to your AM1, your AML2 corresponds to your AM2, and your AML3 corresponds to your AM3. Now what you do, you take, now, can anybody answer from where these values have come from? These are the member end actions. These are the member end actions when the member AB, when member AB was subjected to external loading, when member AB was subjected to external loading, 
and then we solved this member. So if you remember, we did it in the step number 3A. Exactly, Walid is right. It was from step number 3A. So what we did actually, we solved the member uh, CB first, then we transferred those internal resistances to this member, and then we solved this member, and these were the resistances which we transferred, and this 5K was the applied load here. So these are actually the AML values. These are the AML values, and they are coming from the step number 3A. Yes, so uh, step number 3A they are coming from, so so now let's let's do this now without looking at this if if i don't look at this 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 one if i don't write even this one so i should be able to find out the value of aml1 because i know that aml1 is corresponding to am1 and my am1 is is this upward this one now this is your aml1 value this one 60 caps is it pointing exactly in your AM1 direction, which is upward? Yes, it is. So the value will be positive, and it is 60 kips. Now, this 5 kip is your AML2. Now, is it pointing in the same direction as my AM2, which is this, uh, which is in the, on the previous slide, and it is uh, towards the uh, right? It is pointing towards the left. No, it is not pointing in the same direction as our chosen direction of AM2 and AML2. So the value will be negative, minus 5. If we come to this part, this, this point, now we know the vertical is our first one. So this is AML4. AML4 is pointing upward. Is it pointing upward? No, it is pointing downward. So 60 kips with a negative sign. AML5, this 5 kips. AML5 acting 5 kips. Now, sorry, this is ML5 is acting rightward. Is it acting rightward? Yes, it is. So it should be written positive. And what about the AML6? Our AML6 is assumed to be clockwise. Is this moment clockwise? Yes, it is. So this will be written positive. So this is the AML matrix for the member AB. Very similar in a very similar manner. We will be later on. We will also write the AML matrix for the uh, member number two, which will be uh, written in the same way, right? So we what we did in this in this step, we wrote we wrote these values. We these values we wrote from here, but the only thing is that we have uh, focused on the sign. Uh, so if if the load if if here any load if any axial if any shear if any moment if it is not acting in a resume direction of the am value so then you have to write a negative value with that okay now in the next step we come to the amr values and we we directly see that we have two columns in our amr matrix we have two columns so this reminds us of the number of redundant locations. That we have two number of redundant locations. AR1 and AR2. So unit load applied at redundant location 1. Step number 3B. You pick out the values from 3B. And you row, you write it here. Same member AB, right? These are the values coming from the step number 3B. When we apply a unit load corresponding to relocation number one, and we solve both members, member AB and member BC. So we are going to write all this in this column. We will be writing it in this column, right? So why minus one? Why it is minus one? Because this is corresponding to this uh, this. AM1, which is assumed upward, but this is downward, so this is minus 1. Okay. Uh, why this is 30? Uh, can anybody answer? Why this, is, uh, this, why this is 0? Because this is 0. Why this is positive? Because this 30 kip is clockwise, and our assumed direction of AM3 and AMR3, this is also positive. 
right? Similarly, at this end, we have this one k positive, so one, and this zero. This is now written negative. Why? Because it is anti-clockwise, and our assumed direction is clockwise. Okay. What if my assumed direction of A M and consequently the A M R value is 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 counterclockwise? If it is counterclockwise assumed, so as positive, so then you will have this value taken as positive, right? I hope this is clear. Uh, now what we have left with, we have left with the next column of this. Next column of this. Why it is AMR11? Why it is 21? So this first one is corresponding to the location of your member and action, AM1. Where was our AM1? Our AM1 was here. So this first, this first one, it is, it is this first subscript, it is denoting the location of your AM. So our AM, this is at one, AM1. This is AM1. So now this is the AMR81. Due to the unit load applied at the redundant location one, right? This is now the AMR value at three due to the unit load applied at the redundant location number one. So uh, the next one is to solve the next column of this and we can, be able to solve this column by applying the load corresponding to the redundant location number two here. Right? You can do this here. And uh, what we need to do, we need to, again, these values are coming from the previous slide. We only update these values. So where is zero coming from? Uh, let me ask one of you guys, where is minus 15 coming from? If you look at this, from joint A, where the moment is negative. So that's right, that's right. Uh, it is coming from the joint A. This minus 15 is coming from this joint A. And it is coming from the joint A. And it is negative. So, so this is 1, this is 2, this is 3. This is the AMR12, which is this one, which is zero. This value is AMR22, which means it is at the location two due to the unit load applied at location number two. So the Y minus, because it is against the assumed direction of our AM, so this is minus. Minus 15 is coming from this, this one, this one. Now, y negative because it is anti-clockwise and the assumed direction of our AM3 value is clockwise. That's why it is negative. Okay. So, uh, so this is the AMR matrix. This is the AMR matrix. Now we proceed to the uh, final equation which was that our AM matrix is equal to our AML, AML plus AMR into AR. So when you solve these matrices, you come up with these final values. These are the final values of the member and actions. Now, which were, which were our member and actions? So if you remember, these are the values of our member and actions, which we have selected in the very first part here. If you look at this, the, these one, these, so the, that, those values are now the values of these AM1, AM2, AM3, AM4, AM5, AM6. Now, if you look at the values here, this is 34, this is the AM1 value, this is AM2, this is AM3. Now, if you look at the AM4 value, it is saying minus 34. So it means that the assumed direction was upward for AM4 and the actual direction should be negative. It should, should, be, it should be downward, right? Similarly, for the axial one, uh, which was the AM5, it, was, should, it should also be reversed. And then the AM6 is there, which is uh, this one. So now this is the first member completely analyzed. Now in the same way, we analyze the next member. So we again choose the AM1, AM2, AM3, AM4, 
AM5, AM6. We, we find out the AML matrix. We know now what is AML matrix. This is when the uh, load, external load is applied and you, you, you have taken these values again from the step number 3A. From step number 3A, you take the values. Why this is, this is minus 900? Why minus 900? Because this is anti-clockwise. This is anti-clockwise, where is the assumed direction of the AML3 is clockwise. So this is negative, right? Okay, so then the AMR matrix, the first column is coming from when you apply the unit load corresponding to equation one. So this is coming from the step number 3B, these values. And then the next step is, the next column is coming from the, uh, mem the uh, step number 3C, okay, which we discussed in quite detail. So if you apply the same equation, AML, AMR into AR, you come up with these values now. It means this needs to be reversed and this needs to be reversed, right? So now if you see, these were the values of our uh, 25.71 was our AM1, sorry, this uh, AR1. And this 17.8 is also, it is also coming from this one also here, right? So this means that the next member is also solved. 